Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back with an impromptu video because I got a parcel through the post. A couple of days ago I got a message from Kieran over at KD Books saying expect post and remarkably it's already here. So here we are, here is the mysterious parcel. Got my scissors, we're gonna start digging into this. He's also provided a little video about all of the books that are in here, kind of explaining stuff. He actually asked me to do a similar thing a couple of weeks ago when I sent him a parcel of books. And I'm quite intrigued because I'm not 100% sure what's gonna be in here. And I don't know if I should be worried or not because it might be payback for the fact that last time he sent me a bunch of books it included Burnt Sugar by Afni Doshi and it's not that I didn't like Burnt Sugar, but I didn't love it as much as he did and I maybe criticised it in my wrap up and I don't think he's forgiven me for it yet. So here we have this beautiful little box with Square Mile Coffee Roasters, which is a very nice touch, I like that. Okay, I am not looking, I am instead putting my headphones in and I'm going to see him explain the books that he's chosen for me. Good evening Charles, welcome to the corner of my kitchen. Now you sent me some wonderful books and in that video I said I would reciprocate to expect books in the post and now that you're watching this, this little package will be in your hands as we speak. But I wanted to give you some understanding to why I've chose some of the books. Indeed I'm going to go through each book as they appear in the package so we could do it as, as if it's real time, as if I'm actually down in Yorkshire or you in Wales, whichever one sounds better in that circumstance. Yorkshire for life. Okay, now we're on to book one. Continuing on from that prior point, it would be wrong if I didn't give you Welsh literature. You, you might know I'm trying to get more modern Welsh literature into my system to, to stave off Dylan Thomas at an arm's length. So the first book is Bad Ideas Chemical by Lloyd Malcolm. A small, slight novella which talks about a drug-fueled night though this city is riddled with cockroaches and our main protagonist cassandra fish refuses to take off a film prop costume of a astronaut suit the pubs clubs alleys and places you're not meant to be in this fictional town of gorgri do speak of the nightlife the underground of cardiff and it's it's dying nightlife with more places shutting down, more restraint on independent artists being fueled with big nightclub brands. I think this will give you an interesting look into Cardiff and what it means to live in a Welsh city while your identity, your culture is being riddled out by capitalism. Interesting. I have never heard of this before. So on the back it reads, Cassandra Fish believes she is out of this world, wearing her orange film set space suit daily in the hope that her absent parents will return and take her back to her real planet. While she waits, she accompanies her friends, frustrated musician Billy, the only open mic player in the town, and the laddish volatile fox from Bar Tonight Club on one last great night out to drink, dance, take bad chemicals, have bad trips, have bad ideas, and do unthinkable things. I feel like this is going to be a little bit out of my comfort zone, especially as somebody who is not like a big party and not a big clubber but I'm very very intrigued to see what I think and it's always fun to get a book that you've never heard of before so thank you Kieran. Next book, let's go! Furthermore I am the unofficial official booker boy but it would be too easy to give you a book that won <laughs> the award or one which was short or long listed <laughs> therefore I give you twice winner of the man booker one of my all-time favorite authors and subsequent a Nobel laureate. This is J.M. Kutzea's Master of Petersburg. One second for me to just say thank you for teaching me how to pronounce that. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't heard of this book in regards to Kutzea's vast bibliography. Master of Petersburg probably wouldn't touch most people's radar but the fact that you're a fan of the classics. J.M. Kutzea reimagines Dostoevsky and his son who has killed himself and how Dostoevsky deals with grief and how he goes on to write a novel. But what's interesting about this retelling of Dostoevsky's life is that all of it's fictional. He didn't have a son that committed suicide. Everything is made up, though the politics aren't. And the fact that we're reading Lay Miz together and that's oh it's so full of politics it's so full of politics <laughs> I think this is a book that will sweep you off your feet and I do hope that it invigorates you to go out to try more Kutsia because he's 
absolutely fantastic. So yes, a very interesting pick. I am very curious to see how what I think of this. I've actually never read any Dostoevsky, so I probably won't understand any like context to the books that he's written. But in terms of the history that he's trying to evoke, I'm going to be really intrigued by that. I'm also a really big fan of a book about grief. That's something I've been kind of intent on making a video about. I like reading about how different authors explore the topic of grief. Set in 1869, when Dostoevsky was summoned from Germany to St. Petersburg by the sudden death of his stepson, this novel is at once a compelling mystery steeped in the atmosphere of pre-revolutionary Russia and a brilliant and courageous meditation on authority and rebellion, art and imagination. Dostoevsky is seen obsessively following his stepson's ghost, trying to ascertain whether he was a suicide or a murder victim, and whether he loved or despised his stepfather. Colour me intrigued. Next book, here we go. Let's talk about the third book. You absolutely have a passion and are enraptured in, in historical periods. And when you talk about history, for me, I, I love it because you could just tell how much you want to talk about it and as of recording this I've been looking into a period of the 20th century that I knew very little about but as soon as I dipped my toe in I want to learn more because what we covered in my GCSE and my A level didn't even scratch the surface on what I would say is the worst atrocity of the 20th century. I'm unsure what you've studied, so you might actually have a good grasp on this, but I think this book you wouldn't have heard of, and it is Vasily Grossman's Everything Flows, about a man who suffers a tenure in a Russian gulag, but is given freedom, and how he adjusts to life outside of gulag this isn't a light-hearted book and grossman talks about the terror famine in 1932 which went on for a year and killed five million ukrainian people five million is an estimate and what we know about stalin's russia is that everything was hidden so that number could be accurate it could only be a tip of iceberg out of all of the books that I've sent you, this is the one I want you to read and talk about because I think this is a topic that not enough people outside of Russia know about. And once you hear about what was going on, it, it puts a bad taste in your mouth to, to why we haven't learnt about this horrendous regime. Oof. Gosh. Yeah, this one's definitely got my attention. I'm actually, to say that I'm a big history girl. <laughs> um, I actually always say that my weakness really is 20th century in the sense that I always feel like I'm really lacking a lot of 20th century history knowledge. Definitely at GCSE we did the Cold War but really the Russian history that we were studying was more in like the contention, the war between Russia and America rather than really what was going on in Russia at the time. Obviously with the context that you know very bad things are happening but never really getting into explicit detail about what was happening. So I feel like this is going to be really heavy hitting, really really, really poignant which I'm up for, I'm up for. Ivan Grigorievich has been living in the Gulag for 30 years. Released after Stalin's death, he finds that the years of terror have imposed a collective moral slavery. He must struggle to find a place for himself in an unfamiliar world. But in a novel that seeks to take in the whole tragedy of Soviet history, Ivan's story is only one among many. Grossman had too much to say and too short a time to live to concern himself with conventional novel writing. Thus we will hear about Ivan's cousin, Nikolai, a scientist who never let his conscience interfere with his career, and Pinnigan, the informer who had Ivan sent to the camps. Then comes a series of informers, each making excuses for their inexcusable deeds. Inexcusable, and yet, they plead, in Stalinist Russia, understandable, almost unavoidable. And at the core of the book we find the story of Anna Sergeyevna, Ivan's lover, who tells about her involvement as an activist in the terror famine of 1932-3, which led to the deaths of three to five million Ukrainian peasants. Everything flows as an unbearably lucid novel about human suffering from one of the giants of 20th century literature. Last book, here we go. Now the last book is so that we don't leave on a sombre note. You've probably assumed who I would have sent you. Similar to Tom Hansen's book that you sent me, I want you to read this absolutely abhorrent, stupid, pointless book because I want, I, I want to call you Read Rants. I think we all want that. Rather than me tell you who this author is, why don't, why don't you tell us in this clip 
an author you have read a couple of books from and have decided that their books are not for you. Definitely the author who springs to mind for this is Ali Smith. Oh, I wanted to like Ali Smith. So many booktubers who I really respect the reviews of have said how fantastic she is. She's a lot of people's favourite author of all time, but I just, I can never get into her writing style. She's got this kind of like semi stream of consciousness, experimental kind of vibe to her writing. And as I've said before, I hate stream of consciousness with a burning fiery passion. I talk too much. Were we surprised? I don't even think there was a gasp in the audience. This is Hotel World by Ali <laughs> Smith. Quite honestly, the worst... How many pages is there? 236 pages I have ever read. What's it about? Can you read it and tell me? Because it was absolute twaddle. But I don't have to deal with that anymore. It's out of my life, out of my hands. And these books are now your books. And I do hope, and I do hope that we see at least one of these spoken about on your channel. I hope all is well with you and the family. And I'm sending all of the Welsh love your way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Thanks, Kieran. The kind of novel that is as rare as good room service. Ali Smith's Hotel World is a passionate, funny series captivating glimpse into the lives of five people connected to one branch of the ubiquitous global hotel chain. Brought together and forced apart by a bizarre incident involving a dumb waiter, we share their very different experiences of life in the aftermath of death, of pain and sorrow, of hope and love. Everything, in fact, that the world dares to throw at us. <laughs> and one of those things that the world dares to throw at us, this book? I mean, it, it, it's very pretty. That's what I can say for it. I don't have many pink books and, you know, I, I'll, I'm always in need of a pink book. <laughs> So this was a very eclectic bunch and very interesting in the fact that I've not heard of any of these books. I'd heard of all of the authors bar this one, um, but no, not the actual books themselves. So I'm very, very curious to see what I think. Thank you, Kieran. <laughs> so do let me know down below in the comment section, have you read any of these books, any of the authors yourselves? Uh, let me know what you think about them. On a scale of one to 10, how evil do you think Kieran is? I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're all having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.